Today on Free Field Training, we are talking about building a professional looking security duty belt. I see lots of guys and girls out there getting into working security who are walking around without a belt. And I don't mean a duty belt, I mean a belt at all. This is a problem for them and sometimes a problem for the people they work with and their employers and their clients because it's hard to look professional when you're wearing a uniform shirt untucked with black dress pants from Walmart and black gym shoes and no belt. Now obviously you get steps up from that where people are trying to cover the fact that they don't have a duty belt. Some people will wear like a vest, a black vest with security on the front or back. People are doing the best that they can with the money that they have to look as professional as possible. And I can have a deep appreciation for that, trust me. There was a time that I didn't have a whole lot of money for all of this stuff that you see in the background. However, a duty belt doesn't have to be expensive. A belt doesn't have to be expensive. When you go onto websites, you find duty belts that are 60, 70, 100, 200 dollars. You find flashlights that are 200 and 250 dollars. Everything can be at the very high end of the market. What we're going to talk about today is taking the low end of the market, the people that are making a little above minimum wage and want to improve the stuff that they have and doing it within their budget. So I reached out to some companies and one of them was LA Police Gear and I told them the project that I wanted to do, telling people about how they could have a belt and a duty belt and equipment that was cheap enough and affordable enough and would work for their purpose working in security, especially people at the entry level. And they have a kit and they sent it to me. And this is going to be part of our future police equipment giveaways uh, at the end of next month. This kit, so everything you see here, a belt, a cuff case, several pouches, a radio case, a baton holder that I'm currently using for a flashlight, a key carrier, and a glove pouch. All of this together is 50 bucks and it comes in several sizes. So you get the size that's applicable for your girth, you know, medium, large, extra large, whatever, and it comes with these pouches. This allows you to start for 50 bucks with something that looks pretty professional, is easy to clean, and that you can put things into that you're either issued or that you're buying for work as security. Also, you can buy all of these things a la carte, which means if all you want is a belt and a radio holder, the belt is like 12 bucks, the radio holder will annotate in somewhere, this stuff isn't really expensive, and you can buy it together all as a kit. And when you buy it as a kit, it saves a little bit of money, but if you get these things a la carte because you only need certain things, you can save a little money if you only need one or two items on your belt. So I'm gonna go over some of the ways that I set this up, some high-end and low-end options for a security duty belt when you're first starting off that'll keep you out of trouble and that you can either have the very best equipment for your particular purpose or get you in as cheap as humanly possible. The idea I'm trying to have here is to show you how you can build a security duty belt that looks good, that won't get you in trouble, and will cost you less than $100 starting off, and then a couple ways that you can upgrade it over time without breaking the bank. Starting off, you're gonna need a belt to go under this. It doesn't have to be anything fantastic because it's gonna be covered by the belt. So you can get any little nylon belt as long as it's fairly sturdy and it'll hold this stuff on there it's gonna hold just fine. If you need to upgrade to do arm security later on, this also gives you the stuff you need in order to upgrade, but you're gonna to wanna to upgrade your underbelt for that at the same time with something more sturdy because you're gonna put a lot more weight on carrying a handgun and magazines and things like that. It's gonna almost double the weight of the belt. But when you're starting off, what you want is a decent belt that is gonna clip on and off easily, but has a retention buckle that is going to have triple retention. So this one, you have to pull out the middle tab while pushing in on these. So it's easy to put on, it just clicks into place. It's fairly easy to take off if you know what you're doing, but it's gonna be difficult to take off if you don't know what you're doing. So somebody's not gonna be able to unclip your belt. And also, your belt isn't gonna get pushed. These little tabs aren't gonna get pushed when you sit down somewhere or stretch and end up unclipping your belt, which is a problem with extremely cheap belts that you might find at, say, an army surplus store. Next down the list, and this is an area that you're actually gonna to wanna to splurge a little bit, is a cuff case and handcuffs. And by splurge, I don't mean a whole lot of money, I just mean you're gonna want a cuff case for your handcuffs or a strap or something to hold them in, but a cuff case like this one is a fairly cheap option. It keeps them concealed, it makes sure that they're not jingling and jangling on your belt. You're not getting poked in the butt by an open bow on the cuff. 
And then for handcuffs, you're gonna want something that will get the job done and won't get you into trouble. So my recommendation is always either Peerless or Smith & Wesson handcuffs. These are widely available. You can get them for $20, $25, sometimes a little less if you find a good sale on something, if a, if a model or a color is getting discontinued. I know a while ago I found a set of these that were blue and they were like $16 for a set of peerless handcuffs that were blue. So check them out, cross shop. You can find some really good deals on handcuffs out there. You want something, you're not gonna want the cheapest thing that's out there though. And what you're looking for is cuffs that have sharp edges. If they've got sharp edges somewhere, if they're made of pot metal, if the keys are not universal handcuff keys, stay away from those. Peerless and Smith & Wesson are pretty much your cheapest way in handcuffs. You can always upgrade to better handcuffs later. You can spend 60, 70, 100, $120 on a pair of handcuffs. You don't need to do that right away. You're probably gonna need a pair of cuffs. It's more important that you get the training to use the cuffs than what cuffs you buy, but you wanna make sure the ones that you buy aren't gonna cut people if you put them on it. And Peerless and Smith & Wesson, those are the cheap, easy way into the market of a professional set of handcuffs that aren't gonna look silly and that are gonna work for you. Next down here, because I know unarmed security guards, and unarmed security guards, at least in my area, very often carry OC spray, and the OC spray that they're carrying is not a $40 bottle of OC spray. It's not a, a big professional can of OC spray that we would use for riot control. What they're gonna carry is something like this. They're gonna carry a little bottle of personal defense OC spray, like this, I think this is a Mark VI or a Mark VIII can. And it's going to be fairly small, not very feature rich at all. It's also gonna have one of these little plastic clips on them. The reason people carry these is that they're widely available at big box stores, gas stations, truck stops, stuff like that. You're gonna carry one of these. What most unarmed security guards are doing is they're carrying this, they're just throwing it in a pocket, clipping it on. The idea of getting a duty belt, remember, is that all your stuff stays together. It's not taking you 20 minutes to get together at the beginning of the day and then to take all this off at the end of the day. So instead of clipping this into a pocket, you can use one of the pouches that comes with the belt or you can buy it a la carte and you clip this to the outside of the pouch. And now it stays with you. You're not gonna forget it. It's not gonna get all dinged and dented up like this one is. And if you need it, it's very easy to access. It's also not gonna fall out of a pocket or anywhere else. Flipping around to the other side, something that is always a pain in the butt for anybody working security if they forget is their keys. If you have keys for a particular site or facility, you don't wanna lose them. You also don't want them jingling and jangling around or poking holes in your pockets. The silent key carriers can be a really good option for that. It keeps them on your belt with you and easily accessible. So this is just a Velcro opener and then inside is a little nylon loop and a snap with a key ring on this. If I was gonna use this particular one, I would probably upgrade and put a little snap ring or something in there to make it easier to take them on and off. There's also a baton holder, which I think most people working on armed security are gonna use this baton holder to carry a flashlight. There's lots of great flashlight options on them on, out there. I have probably 50, 60 videos on different flashlights, everything from a $15 VG15S from Thorfire to uh, you know $165 Olight Fryer that we're looking at here. There's you know ass flashlights and streamlight flashlights and all sorts of flashlights, and most of them all have about the same barrel diameter. So when the barrel diameters are pretty close to the barrel diameters of batons, a baton holder can be a really good option for carrying these flashlights in an open top pouch. And a very cheap option as well. Of course, later on down the road, you can always upgrade. If you end up getting certified in baton, you can put a baton in the same holder and it's gonna hold it just fine. And batons, of course, also run the full gambit from something that's $20, $25, like this friction lock baton, to very expensive ASP and modded knock batons, things like that. Obviously, we're also gonna hand you a radio pouch. Most places that you're gonna work security at, they're gonna provide you a radio, and so one of the big problems is getting a radio pouch that's gonna fit that radio. Lots of them have clips on the back. There's just gonna be a little snap clip on the back that you can attach to a normal belt. That works on the short term. First time you get into a fight with somebody, that thing's gonna go flying, and the radio doesn't do you any good to call for help when you're fighting with someone if the radio's across the room on the floor, which is why if you wanna look a little more professional and you wanna be a little more effective and a lot safer, you attach the radio to your butt using a pouch on a belt. This pouch, you can use a wide variety of radios in it. It's going to be a little oversized for some of them, but you're going to be able to take the little shock cord strap 
on this pouch and attach it down over the top of your radio and snap it to the front. If it's too long, the easy solution for this is either to tie a knot in this shock cord or twist it and then snap it down over the radio. The great thing about radios and radio pouches is you're pretty much only ever going to pay for the pouch because you're going to get issued the radio. It's just a matter of making sure the radio is going to fit the pouch. These universal pouches, they're not the perfect solution, but they do the job of keeping the thing attached to your butt so it doesn't go skidding across the floor. One item on a duty belt for unarmed security that I very rarely see anybody using and is absolutely essential in my book is a glove pouch or some type of pouch that you're going to put gloves on. This is the glove pouch that comes with this LA Police Gear set. Rubber gloves are awesome. What you're going to want is some sort of lightly colored rubber glove so you can see if there's gunk on the glove and a whole bunch of them because when you need rubber gloves you normally need more than two. It's great to have four or six pairs. You want to get in really good with your other employees, with the people working at the store, with the boss. When, you, when somebody needs rubber gloves or a pen have extras on you. And rubber gloves are one that are a total lifesaver when you happen to have them and you need them. Because when you need rubber gloves, you really need them. When there's crap all over the floor, when there's blood all over something, and you can just pull out two or three pairs of rubber gloves, people are going to be really happy with you. It's not something you might use every day at every site if you're working security, but when you need them, you need them. And having them on the belt means you're never going to forget to shove them in your pocket, which is what a lot of people that are carrying them around are doing. They also keep them from getting crushed and mashed and getting holes in the rubber gloves as they wear from getting carried around every day. And of course, if you have a belt, you're going to need belt keepers. Belt keepers are one of those wear items that they're going to break on you over time. They're nothing special. It's just a strip of material with snaps on both sides and you snap it around your belt around whatever your heaviest or most critical equipment is. So if you're doing arm security, it's going to be around both ends of your pistol and then the other side of the belt. If you're doing unarmed security, just stagger them across the belt so you don't have a situation where your pants belt is way above or way below your duty belt. It holds everything together and keeps stuff from falling and your belt from falling down in case you don't have a butt large enough to hold it up. This kit, of course, comes with four of them. Most people aren't going to need all four of them if they're not carrying a firearm. You can sometimes get away with two or three, depending on what your inner belt is and how tightly you have it cinched. But four is normally the, the number that's going to get you through most situations. And it's going to make sure that belt's really locked into place so you don't have the, the sliding around. And of course, looking the part is half the battle doing security. Now that we got through the bare minimums and keeping you at just about under $100 for the whole setup, let's talk about some upgrade things that you can do. One is with your lights. We talked about you could spend all the money you want or as little money as you want on a light. There's options that give you a lot more versatility. I've got another video out already about the Olight Fryer. Well, I said in that video, the Fryer is a bad police or security duty light. It's a great multi-tool of a light that does lots of stuff. If you need a flashlight and you need to direct traffic, but you're not doing those things all the time, you can have a little gel cone for the Olight Fryer that it comes with. Turn the thing on to red LEDs. Pop your little cone on, and it's not going to work as well as a dedicated traffic cone, but it's going to work as a light, it's going to work as a cone, it's going to do the things you need it to do at the moment you need them to do it, it's just not going to do it as well as dedicated products for these different things. If you're in a job where you're constantly directing traffic, this is a situation where having a dedicated traffic baton can come in handy. This little foot-long traffic baton, they're fairly cheap. They're only $15, $16. If you need a traffic baton more than you need a flashlight that's got lots of throw, you can also use your baton holder to throw a traffic baton in. Does it look like the coolest thing in the world? No, but if you're in a parking lot all night and you need a place to stow this that isn't the pocket on your pants that you bought the right size but then had to put long johns under in order to stay warm because it's 30 degrees outside where you're working and you didn't really plan on that, this is a good option to be able to keep the baton on you and not rip a hole in your pants. If you move down the road and you want better handcuffs, you can upgrade to ASP handcuffs. You could upgrade to a set of Safari Land rigid handcuffs. There's lots of handcuff options out there. Most of them are going to do the same job that your Peerless, your Smith & Wesson handcuffs are going to do. But what they're going to do is they're going to give you slightly better features or better tactile control of 
the handcuffs while you're applying them, or you're going to give you better control of the individual that you're applying the handcuffs to. Most people are going to buy a pair of Smith & Wesson or Peerless handcuffs and use them for at least a good 5-10 years out of their career before they manage to wear them out, even if they're using them all the time. OC spray is another easy upgrade. The larger the can of OC that you have, uh, the more volume it has inside, the more spritzes you're going to get out of it, and the less likely it is to fall apart on you when you're storing it for large periods of time. Because let's be serious, we're, we're not really OCing people all that frequently in police work or in security work, especially these days. So if you're going to carry it and you want to upgrade from your little chintzy can of the Walmart Special OC, go out, get yourself a larger can of OC spray that has a nice stream nozzle on it, where you can target an individual with that OC spray. Again, you want to keep your liability as low as possible, especially working security, especially indoors working security. That'll keep you out of trouble. It'll give you lots of options for uh, how much OC that you can apply. Because all the pouches are nylon over time, if the belt starts wearing out or you need more space on the belt because you get a little larger, going with black ballistic nylon makes it very easy to upgrade. You can go and go from a $12 to $20 belt like this one is a la carte, and you can upgrade as high as you want to go and still use a lot of the same pouches on it, and they're going to look more or less uniform. From 10 feet away, people aren't going to be able to see that it's a different size of ballistic nylon, and you're probably going to be just fine. Another advantage of the ballistic nylon is when you buy a flashlight and it comes with a pouch, lots of the pouches that those flashlight comes with are ballistic nylon, so they're going to mesh with your belt setup a lot better. Also, Duty holsters and mag pouches are cheapest in ballistic nylon most of the time, so it's going to save you some money overall down the road, so you can slowly upgrade this as you need more stuff on your belt, or you start doing different jobs or getting into a different industry. Another great flashlight upgrade is to go to a light that will charge right off of a USB, especially if you can find one that will charge right off a USB like this ASP XTDF that has a port that is the same port that you used to charge your cell phone. That is a huge, huge advantage for people that are working anywhere. If you already have a cell phone charger in your pocket or in your backpack or in the car or wherever, being able to charge your flashlight off of the same charger is a, a big advantage in not forgetting your charger or needing a specialty charger or having to order a charger. It's a big advantage lights like this have over lights like this that have a proprietary charging head. If you'd like to see more things about working unarmed security, maybe vest sets up, setups or boots that'll get the job done that are relatively inexpensive, other things related to working unarmed or armed security, you can check out the rest of this channel. There's lots of videos already on it. If there's a topic that isn't there, throw it down in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your comments and questions about how to set these types of things up and what would be good substitutions for the things that we talked about here today. Now I'm going to take some comments and questions from the Instagram live stream audience. If you're interested in being part of that Instagram live stream audience, follow me on Instagram, Tommy underscore free field training to be part of the discussion. Hey, thanks for watching free field training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made? Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.